Hey guys, so today we're gonna be reacting to my 2020 marketing predictions. I make these videos every year of me basically talking BS about what I think is gonna happen in the creator economy. And although I do say some valuable things, talk, walk, <laughs> what? What did I say? What's the quote? Essentially, let's see if my actions are speaking louder than my words and if any of the things I say in last year's video were true. Okay, let's, I'm actually really scared to do this. So lately I've been reading the comment section and a lot of you have been saying I've been milking my age. A lot of you are referring to the fact that every- That's actually kind of facts. Like I, I milk my age so hard. Like I, I always put 18 years old entrepreneur, 19 years old. Like, and I mean, you guys notice, you guys make fun of me. And it seems like I'm doing this for views when in reality, I'm scared to get old. Literally like my two best friends on the internet are Haley and Brennan and they literally turned 20 years old. This is so uncomfortable to watch. You guys don't know I'm Vegas right now because I'm turning 20 next week. All right, let's go over the five trends that I did go over. This is the surface one. Green pressure. Okay, so this might be very, very controversial, but being sustainable is like a trend. It's now. actually fast. You know, 2020 was probably a year where everybody was a lot more socially aware about climate change or political issues or even just things that are problem with social injustice. Like I think that there has not only been a lot of green pressure, but just overall social pressure. For most brands, they're just gonna use it as a monetization effort. Literally what this means is any product you're gonna see, people are gonna try to throw the word eco or sustainable into it. I actually do I think this is true. There's a lot of fashion brands that just kind of keyword stuff their products and, you know, brand with eco-friendly or sustainable. And at my company X8, you know, we do more a lot of like civic movement projects. Like last year we did a um, campaign for the US election with a TikTok house. And it was all about like how to spread the word of Gen Z to vote. And it was actually really interesting just because that's like one area where I think that everyone on the same page wanted to like spread a good movement. But I have seen like other huge companies like almost use the social justice thing as a PR move. And there's not a really bad issue with that. It just, it is doesn't feel as genuine. So I have noticed that a lot in 2020, a lot of brands are just like keyword stuffing everything. I think a lot of Gen Z will be able to see through that. So it's important to like, I think as a lot of brands are pushing this on marketing to see what the intention is behind it, if they're actually trying to make change. Just to make sure that their website is popping up when you search a certain word. So brands are gonna start placing a lot of money when you type in reusable or sustainable on Google search. Okay, I work with this company actually called I know you're gonna hate me because I, I just blew by the name, but like this company literally was like, I was like, what do you want to promote for this? Like, you know, what's your call to action? And the dumb one thing was they want to do their like sustainable campaign for one of their new menu items. So I think that 100%, it's like definitely one of the biggest things I've also seen at my agency. So I actually do think that I was right on that. The future is private. I think more and more people are tired of the Instagram model look. I personally don't scroll on my explore page for this reason anymore because it gives me anxiety and jealousy. Bro, I'm on fire. I actually do think this trend did really manifest in 2020. You could see the rise of TikTok and there's this creator named Victoria Paris, who I would say is kind of like the TikTok version of Emma Chamberlain. If you guys don't know Emma Chamberlain, is a YouTuber that makes a lot of authentic vlogs and you know, Victoria's uh, channel or TikTok profile is so raw. She uploads like 15 to 30 times a day of just random things. And it's just so authentic to the point where it's like, she doesn't even pose, like she shows her imperfections. And I think that at, at least coming from like a, a young teenage female audience, you know, point of view, I think that it's what I prefer to see. I specifically unfollow models. Although my For You page honestly is filled with like dancing teenage girls for some reason, but I try not to subscribe to that. I think the future is private. So what this means is Instagram is gonna start focusing on DMs and stories versus actual feed. And they're gonna put more emphasis on like communication versus just like hey I'm a model so a lot of like influencers that are like pretty I'm sorry they're probably just gonna go down in a shithole because they can't connect and emotionally you know converse with their audience it's actually interesting I said that because I don't necessarily fully agree with that model I think that you know with Instagram launching reels and feed posts like I, I think that there's still this broadcast type of content that's still in demand I think the main thing I wanted to add on though is, is there is this emphasis on not just DMs but a peer-to-peer -peer, like con conversation I think that one of the biggest things I saw in 2020 was the growth of like discord groups and just like communities because you know with covid <laughs> you guys my camera's flashing that um there's no more battery and what did jay do not pack enough batteries so we're gonna try to hyper speed this video okay what i was trying to say was i think the rise of discord chats and communities and the need for online events has really pushed not necessarily a direct message type of um, demand but i think a peer-to-peer -peer demand so you see a lot of creators launching communities even social tokens the only correction i would make to this is maybe not the future is private but the future is peer-to-peer -peer. i feel like you guys whenever you meet in the comments not working it literally means more than probably i don't know meeting just the creator i think that when i see people just vibing 
Makes my heart warm. A lot of people don't believe in my predictions and I get it. Who is this 18 year old talking shit about digital marketing? But I have to say something creepy happened. Last September, I made a video about when Instagram was going to crash and literally the next month it did. So I do think I'm Houdini. Like I do think I'm really smart. Although I shit on myself, I do know that like I speak some facts, not because I think I'm the shit. Most of the things I say are just regurgitated information from Leon. Yeah, that's right, my dad. That video we made together predicting like or roasting e-commerce websites got like more likes and comments than my regular videos. Like I'm pretty sure I should just start a channel with my dad because y'all like him more than me. <laughs> so like this video if so you're so far enjoying it and you want Leon back on the channel. Because I swear to God, y'all y'all love my dad and just show some love to my dad because he's very camera shy. He hates being on videos, but he does so much information and research for me in terms of creator economy and just a lot of technology stuff because he's like a kind of like a CEO of a tech company. Brands taking character. In 2020, you're probably not gonna talk to a human. You're gonna talk to a robot. For those who don't know, like two years ago, I started like a software SaaS product called Personal Brand Journey. That was essentially a very similar competitor to Community or Mailchimp. It was essentially a, like a text message bot. So it's funny that I like I noticed my trend videos or my prediction videos are very focused on like the product I'm building. Like my last prediction video for 2021, I uploaded last week, was very heavy on my current company, which is kind of about like how to create a sustainable brand slash like create an ecosystem with social tokens, which I talked a lot about like crypto stuff. So the only thing I do have to say with the prediction videos is they're very skewed to the company I'm working on. I I've noticed that. I think that's smart, right? I think so. Trying to automate their customer service. So they're not gonna have a John and Sally. They're gonna have Mr. AI respond to our clients. Okay, so funny story. I don't agree with this at all. I, I think that it's, you're, you're, you're uh, right, Jade. A lot of people will interact with bots, but I don't think we're at the level of like full on AI. Like when I used my like open table app to book a restaurant today with my friend, like it was just like, just, just like a kiosk. Like I don't think it's fully on conversational bots taking over yet. I, I don't think we're at that stage yet. And I don't think people want to be at that stage yet. The reason why I know this is because I actually had to stop working on personal brand journey because I noticed people hated it. Like the the, the bot actually, like it, it was annoying people because text message is super invasive. So I actually don't agree with this one. I think that people want quality human conversations unless the AI is super freaking good. Like there's this company called Clio, which is an AI chat bot for banking. And it did really, really well in the first few months, but I don't know how their company's doing now. I haven't heard from them since. So I don't know if we're at the stage yet where people want to get spammed through bots. Like I personally try to minimize my main notifications with any subscription or newsletter. TikTok is gonna receive pressure. Can't make money on TikTok. The only way you can technically make money is through live streams, but TikTok is placing ads and none of the creators are getting a percentage of this. I do think that TikTok is receiving pressure still and has been for a while for a better monetization program for the creators. But the one thing I do have to say is I do put this in the correct bucket because three months later after I made this video, TikTok rolled out the creator fund, which essentially when they pay creators monthly for making videos. I think I got paid like $400, $500 for like my couple of uh, videos last month, which is not the best for the reason of like I do get a lot of viewership that's a lot more than YouTube so the AdSense does not compare and also creator fund is not, people say it's like kind of strange and like Conf, uh, con, like a little not a good idea if you like don't have a large enough audience because it could block reach. But I think that people still are a little pissed off about monetization on TikTok. Like they take a lot of money if you do live streams and they obviously take a lot of money with brand deals. Like a lot of the ads you see are from the TikTok marketplace and they take around like 50%. So I don't know. I think that TikTok is still receiving pressure. I think more and more creators are just using TikTok as like a lighthouse to, to amplify their YouTube channel really or direct it to another source of a like landing page. So I, I do agree with this and I wholeheartedly stand by it. And I did predict the future. Are you in the creator fund? Me. Yeah. yeah. Do you make like money from it? Yeah. My friend Ben made 786 last month from his TikTok. He was averaging 17 million views. That's not a lot of money. If it's a, if that's YouTube AdSense, that would be like 10x. But that's still interesting. So yeah, TikTok creator funds shit, but it's getting better. Like I, done, I definitely think it's decent money compared to like what they offered before. The number one trend I think that's going to happen on TikTok is it's a little bit confusing. I've seen a lot of people get backlash and a lot of hate has been around this subject. And honestly, it sucks because I'm kind of a part of this mess. The number one trend- Wait, what? what am I about to say? <laughs> what am I about to say here? <laughs> gonna happen in 2020 is creators going- Wait, I don't even know. I don't even know what I'm gonna say here. I'm a part of the problem. Direct to their fans. What does this mean? So I don't know if you've seen, but Jake Paul's a YouTuber with 10 million subscribers, and he recently put out his phone number. And this phone number is a way for him to take his audience to text message. Okay, so I give this last prediction from this marketing video definitely a 
correct. I do think creators are going direct to their fans, but not through text message. I don't agree with that. I, I think that like fans want direct experience, like access, like Patreon or people wanting like membership access or one-on-one -on -one events. Like I, I think that those are super successful. But in terms of like, spamming people, marketing content through text message, which is such, it's, it's literally like phone number is so valuable and it's so in, like, aggressive and you know vulnerable that i think that a lot of people just don't want to give it out anymore so that's the only thing i have to say i can make a whole video about this but i think that with the rise of social tokens and kind of this acts idea of ownership i do think that you don't really need to have a youtube channel to like make money like you can use youtube to market your products and that could be your you know membership or patreon like i do think there's just going to be a movement of like staying away from advertisers and, and more direct uh, direct connection to your fans i had a meeting with the founders of rally rally is a social token company where you can anyone can launch their own social tokens and it's really interesting they are built on ethereum which is a type of blockchain and they're just enabling creators to have direct connection to their fans like you know their address which is like kind of like their the wallet address but you also know a little bit about their information their name what their purchase behavior is and yeah i, I think there's just going to be a rise even since last year of more direct connection. I just don't think it's text message, girl. And um, I don't know, like, I, I, I like watching this video for the sole reason of like, my lack of knowledge made me super like go for it. And I think that's a good thing. Like, I think that whenever you start something or like have a company, if you guys are, cause I know a lot of you guys want to start businesses and you always ask like, how do you start so many? Like you almost have to go in a mindset of ignorance and like, just like doing it. Because if you overthink and you know too much, you'll, you'll like psych yourself out. And I think that what strikes me most interesting about this video, honestly, is yes, like I, I got most of the facts right. But also it's because like a lot of the products I was building was trying to fit in with this like idea of like, oh, my company's trendy. So I don't know. I just thought it was interesting that like I was very optimistic about what I'm building. And that's not a bad thing. I think that you kind of have to do that when you start something. So if you feel unsure about your business, it's very normal and you typically get proven wrong because you got to pivot. But yeah, that was today's videos, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I genuinely had fun. And as I'm turning 20 next week, I'm very scared. I don't know what to do in my 20s. I'm no longer a teenager. Uh, you guys can call me old. You guys can call me a Zoomer, it stands for Gen Z Boomer. I'm ready for this next phase. I don't really know what I'm gonna no, like do next. I have a lot of options right now in terms of my company where I can take it. Like I have an agency, right? So a lot of it is less capital intensive. Like I could I could actually start something or a platform, but for now I'm chilling here in Vegas. So you guys should check out my part two vlog where I just show my day with my friends. We're about to actually go to the pool. So thank you guys for watching. Shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this video next episode. If you want to be the next comment winner, all you got to do is just comment and um, I'll pick a winner next week. Shout out to you guys. All right, love you. Bye, bestie.